a really, really good event. Um, we have this meeting taking place. We've got a plethora of camps and other opportunities for the athletes to take advantage of um, coming up. So it's a very exciting time. And um, it's kind of nice to be talking about actual swimming items versus the usual, you know, the world is falling and that type of stuff. From a financial position, the LSC is in fantastic shape. Um, as we continue to move forward, we're trying to be more strategic with our, our money and the way that we place it and the way that we um, hold it. Um, there was a with the scare a few weeks ago with the uh, bank out west um, made us really start to examine, do we want to diversify a little bit more with where the money is sitting? Um, and so you'll see more information about that coming up. Um, we've also taken notes from you guys, the members, about communication coming from the board. Um, as you've seen over the last couple of months, um, at least the last three, we have been sending a post-board meeting, like one pager, uh, a recap of the activities from the board of directors. We hope that this allows you guys to feel like you're more in tune with what the board is doing and what is being discussed at the board level. Um, the board in general has really been functioning quite well. We've had a lot of uh, discussions. Um, I can tell you, having been on the board for many, many years as age group chair, small stint as admin vice chair, we are very business oriented these days, meaning we're not spending a lot of time on side conversations and other things like that. We're getting work done that hopefully um shows with the athletes and opportunities that we're providing so you probably don't want to hear too much more from me that is just a quick update if you have any questions for me now is a great time to ask them otherwise we will just start moving along all right hearing nothing i am trying to see if jack is on he is all right mr yetter do you have an update for everyone on this zoom this afternoon yeah, real briefly, since House of Delegates um, is admin vice chair, uh, I've been focused on working with Jeff and others. We have a uh, strategy meeting scheduled for the board in May. That is the intent of that, and we've done some background work on it already, is to kick off having our next quad plan written. Uh, it's going to be as thorough as we can make it. The intent is to have uh, a structure and a lot of programming ideas pre-built into the next four-year period, starting with trials in 24 and going through LA. And um, kind of is my part of that. We've done a number of things. I'm looking to um, make sure that we are in good shape. I've been working with Mark and Jeff on some financial issues. You know that we have moved the office that did cost us some money up front, but by the time we're in our next quad plan, uh, we estimate that that's gonna free about $25,000 or more every year for programming. Uh, I've always kept my eye on the administrative costs and we're trying to be as efficient as we can uh, to maximize the percentage of the dollars that we bring in that are spent on programming. Um, I'd like to welcome Amy, who's program director now. Um, she's part of that process as we start to put on more programming. Um, and the other thing is we're going to do a review of rules and regs this summer uh, as part of that process and have some uh, have some uh, legislative work to put through at the House of Delegates in the fall. Uh, we're looking to make things flexible and efficient for the committee so that they can do their work in programming and in championship meet experience for the athletes. Uh, if anybody has any ideas or any thoughts on that, please feel free to reach out to me. And that's pretty much what I've been working on in the direction that we've been working. Uh, if you're tired of hearing from Jeff, you must be equally tired of hearing from me because we've been meeting. So, if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them, but that's the focus right now. And uh, I hope that everybody is really happy and can participate as much as they can in building the quad plan for the next quad. 
any questions for Jack? All right. Um, is Kate or Michael on for from age group? All right. Um, one of the nice things about having Amy on board now is she is sitting in on all of the age group and senior meetings. And I know that our senior chair had a family emergency to deal with this, this afternoon. Um, but I'm going to ask Amy to kind of give us an update from the age group committee um, perspective. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me right now. Um, so age group committee, we just hosted uh, the age group pro series camp yesterday. Uh, it was 12 and under athletes. We had 60 of them. And it actually was a really run, well-run camp. I have to thank the coaches, uh, Dustin from PPD, he was head coach. Uh, we had Lee Therrington, who's from Glenbrook, Nick from Hornets, Rob from New Trier, and Rebecca from Fox. And they really ran that really well. The kids enjoyed it. Um, the parents uh, gave positive feedback as well. So uh, for the first camp back since 2019, this was a really exciting opportunity for the kids to be at the Pro Series last night and to have some training before that. Uh, we're working on a 10 and under Rising Stars camp as well, hoping to try to get that up in June. And then both Michael and Kevin have been working on a camp plan for the next four years as well. Um, and they have a pretty robust program that they're hoping to roll out. So that's where uh, we are right now for age group. One, is there a roster? Of which uh, I just saw in the chat, is there a roster of which athletes attended the camp? Um, yep, that was sent out um, in a coach's newsletter um, a couple of weeks ago as to who, um, which athletes were there, but uh, we could definitely get that information at least on the website so you know who was in attendance. Um, the only other bit of business from the age group perspective that everyone needs to be aware of, um, we had bids received for um, regionals. Um, the board has tentatively approved those some of those bids. You will be getting or a your club representative, plural, will be getting a Google Doc to vote for um, those bids. And then that way we can officially move forward since we now have it in our rules that we can vote electronically. There was no bid for the um, age group championship meet. So as of right now, there were opening bids for an additional 30 days. So come May 16th, if there is no bid, we will um, be running the meet as Illinois Swimming. Um, so if your team is interested, um, and you're not sure of logistics or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to Amy or Pam um, or Brian at Program Ops or myself. We'll be glad to walk you through any of that. Um, where are the sites and dates for camps? J uh, Joe, the camp page on the website is being updated as camps are approved. So that is your best resource for camp information. So back to the regional um, bids, you'll see that email coming out in the next couple of days. So if you are the voting member from your club and you don't see an email by like Wednesday or Thursday, um, please reach out to Pam um, as she will make sure that you get that information. Um, we'll be setting up that Google Doc. It's all of the teams that bid, they will be listed, all right? So you will see all the things that were all the sites that were bid, you will see in that doc. You will also see what was approved by the board of directors. Okay. Good question, Todd. Summer championship meets. Joe, I don't think a summer champs posted. The summer championship meets are not posted as of yet. The website will be updated here in the next couple of days with the summer information. So just give us a little bit of time on that. Um, We've been really focused on getting the banquet going and the camps going and the other op the other things that are running. All right, any other age group related questions? All right, moving along then to senior. Uh, Amy, I'll start with this since I have his notes and it'll just make it easy. Kevin apologizes that he could not be here this afternoon um, unless he is actually on and I'm just ignoring him. It doesn't seem that he is. Um, Basically, right now, the senior committee is working on 
um, their camp programs and other opportunities, as well as taking a look at uh, the things that they would like to propose at the quad planning meeting that Jack referenced a few minutes ago. Right now, um, they're working on finalizing everything for the June's the June senior camp down to Florida. Um, as of Monday 410, there were 16 females and males invited uh, to participate in that event. The deadline to um, intent send your intent in is May 1st. If there's somebody that declines, then they will move on to the next athlete on the list. For athlete selection, it was the top 16 boys and 16 girls, ages 15 to 17, non-graduated seniors. Time standards with our swimmers with time standards above sectionals and below summer junior nationals. And the rankings were based on PowerPoint swims done during July of 22 until April 1st of 23. The camp page on the website has the current ranking list so you can see who was invited. Um, again, very exciting as in we have not had an opportunity to run um, these camps. And this is a really unique and awesome opportunity that hits a level of athlete that we normally do not get to hit with our programming. So kudos to the senior committee for getting this put together um, and kudos to Amy and Pam for helping out and making sure that this is going to go off without a hitch. Um, the only other business item from the senior side is there was only one bid received for senior champs next short course season. That was by Patriot Aquatic Club at Stevenson High School. So when you get that voting document for regionals, you will also have the opportunity to approve the senior championship bid. Seeing as it's only one, um, you know, unless we when we haven't seen another bid, that will be the host for the short course senior championship meet. Any questions for senior? Fantastic. Now I know that this next individual is online. Um, Brian and program operations. I know he has a bunch of stuff to review in regards to the Hall of Fame and um, other program op related items. Brian? He was on. It's what fun with virtual meetings. Okay, it doesn't look like he is on right now. We're going to come back to him because I would rather um, make sure that he has an opportunity to present those things. I'll send him a text in a second, see if everything is all right. Uh, treasurer is Mark on. Mark is not on. Uh, from a financial standpoint, all of our financial reports are on the website um they're posted under each of the board meetings we did clean up all of the links on the website on the board of directors page so you should be able to access all of the board reports um specifically the financial information as i said earlier we are really happy with where we're at financially um we we are moving some money from our general operating account to our money market account um, there's no point in us sitting on just a lot of cash that's not earning us any money. And that money market account has been performing quite well. Um, other financial things to, to take note of, um, it seems that we will be doing well with the duel in the pool in terms of budget. Um, that planning and programming is, is moving along at a steady pace. So we're hopeful to come in you know, at or under the uh, proposed budget line item. The only other big ticket item that will be coming up is the Hall of Fame in September. Um, this is at this point, like six or seven years in the making, there will be a large financial expenditure for that event. Um, being at, seeing as that is the, um, the signature event that we are putting on for that item. And that was approved back in 20... 19, Pam, does that sound right? 2019 for the Hall of Fame. Um, any treasurer questions? Okay. Pam, any membership registration information you would like to share with everybody, other than we all love swims? No. We're good. We can hear you. An update, Pam? No? Okay. Any questions for Pam in terms of membership registration? 
Awesome. All right, coaches, reps. I know Mike and Casey are both on. Um, gentlemen, feel free. I don't know who's presenting on your behalf, but go for it. All right, <clears throat> I'll start, and then he's going to finish. This is Casey. I'm the large club rep. Uh, so we've been somewhat busy. I feel in the in the coaches committee. Uh, we are going to be starting a coaching podcast for Illinois swimming. Uh, it's exactly uh, finalized as to the date. Our date originally was um, hoping for the beginning of April, but that did not happen. So we're going to try for the beginning of May. Uh, myself, the uh, voice of Illinois Swimming, and Derek, uh, the noise of Illinois Swimming, uh, will be the hosts. And we have a list of topics uh, that we have started, and um, we're hoping to bring in a guest along with us to discuss each one. Some of the topics are including some dry land progressions for age group, swimming, how clubs run parent education, progress reports for swimmers, and so on. We've also discussed having the lead of each committee um, host, or at least on the podcast, to let everyone know what they're doing, much like what this is accomplishing now, but on a more regular basis. Uh, our goal is to do it every six weeks. So that's that's the first thing. Uh, second thing, there is a women in Illinois coaching bingo and wine tasting Sunday, April 30th. Uh, that's at two o'clock in the afternoon. It's hosted at the Chicago Wine Company, 835 North Central Avenue in Wooddale, which is right by where I grew up. Uh, so e reminders will be sent this week about that. Uh, and then... <laughs> But one last thing for me before Mike, uh, Illinois Swimming has been selected by USA Swimming to host a coaching clinic in the spring of 2025. Uh, we That is all we know at this point. Uh, we just know that we're hosting it. We don't know who, we don't know when. We just know in 2025. So more information will be coming uh, on to you, Mike. All right, hi everybody. I'm Mike Regan, uh, small club coaches representative. Um, and then I'm, I'll just finish up. We have, uh, we still have, we want to remind everybody that the Illinois Swimming Coaches Education Grant is still available and can be found on the website. Um, we've been working on updating the application process and website access to make sure this is a little more accessible and more utilized. Um, and then we've been brainstorming ideas uh, for improving coaches education programs for the next quad. So uh, if anybody has any ideas, We'd be happy to hear them um, reach out to anyone on the committee. Any questions? Thank you, guys. Um, all right, going backwards in the agenda, Brian is online now. So let's have the program operations vice chair report. Hey, thanks. You might be giving me double. I'm having all kinds of connection issues. Um, just, I don't have a whole lot real quick. Um, I thought the banquet today was awesome. Thanks to Pam and Amy. Putting that together, I think it was very well received um, for our athletes to get back and be recognized in person. Um, meet sanctioning deadlines will remain the same. When I talked this week um, about possibly evaluating what we want to do come fall, but there's no changes currently in the plans. Um, I wanted to talk about um, the Hall of Fame a little bit, just to give an update. So the Hall of Fame website is coming along. We do have someone that's been putting together all the bios for us and working with our website committee. So that should be hopefully coming out pretty soon. Um, and then as far as the Hog, hog your Fame, geez, I can't even talk. The Hall of Fame dinner for inauguration is what I tried to say. Uh, it's September 30th at the Hyatt Regency O'Hare. Um, I've been in weekly meetings and well, even more than weekly. Um, everything's kind of after three years of planning this three years ago, it's finally coming to fruition. Um, we are close to being able to set a price to sell tickets with um, the goal being of getting the invitations out to the inductees in the very first part of May, as well as starting ticket sales shortly thereafter. So uh, we are close to getting the price point, not making money in it, just making sure we're covering the cost of each ticket. And we have any questions, feel free to shoot. 
Awesome. And then, uh, Brian, are you giving are you giving the championship meet task force update later as well? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure that I have this done right. <laughs> All right. Any questions for Brian? All right. Thank you. Uh, athlete representatives. I know Aiden and Savannah are on. All right. Hi, Hello. everyone. Um, I'm Savannah, a senior athlete representative. Um, currently, we're working along with Amy on the 10 and under Rising Stars camp. Uh, we initiated this after we saw um, some of like the registration numbers from the last House of Delegates. Um, and then a huge part of this camp is also going to be some out of water, like team building and mental health sessions as well. Aiden, anything you have to add? No, she hit on all of it. Um, I, will, uh, I, I will, I would, go ahead. No, I will uh, say real quick that Savannah and Aiden have been um, really fantastic as senior athlete reps. Um, as they start to move on to their next phase of their swimming careers and a young adult life, uh, I just wanted to say thank you to both of them because they've been great they've probably been the most active and involved senior um, athlete reps that we have had. So thank you both for your time and your effort. Um, any questions for our athletes? Okie doke, moving right along. Amanda, officials chair. Hello. I took my sparkly outfit off. I'm sorry. Um, okay. So a couple of things just updating you guys on. We currently have 710 um, registered officials in Illinois. So we are still if not the largest, one of the largest LSCs to have officials. Uh, we do still have some people who are completing recertifications. Um, to give you some ideas for spring clinic numbers, we currently have 61 new and advancing officials, which breaks out to 26 new stroke and turn, 22 AO, seven starter, and four refs that are doing clinics this spring. <laughs> Pardon me. <coughs> um, we also have the duel in the pool coming up in May in Westmont. The link, the link is on the website. I can't breathe now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the link is on the website um, if you are available to officiate. So, um, or I'm assuming Pam will be sending out a volunteer um, email at some point. Um, we are also um, from a, an officials committee uh, position working on assigning the summer champ meets, um, meet refs and ARs. So we have um, completed... Um, our seniors uh, lead team, and we are halfway done on our age groups. So we'll have that done. Um, and then we're pretty uh, good into the regional assignments as well um, and pre-planning for our winter 2024, which is a scary thing to say, but winter 2024 age groups and senior meets. Um, and we're also working close with Tom and Open Water on the Open Water State Meet in August. So we have um, the meet ref um, and AR, hopefully we'll have that answered um, this week. Um, and also working with him to um, possibly do another open water event that we're working on. And then the only other thing we have going on is um, our quad planning for May, because um, we have that report, as Jack talked about, um, and the plan that we're creating. And really for us is working across all the multiple committees and, and how we can work there. Yes, Jack, open water today is Tuesday, August 8th in Mantino. Any questions for me? No, doesn't seem as such. Um, thank you, Amanda. Appreciate it. Um, operational risk. I spoke to Joey earlier today. Um, very few reports coming in of incidents, which does not mean that incidents are not happening. So um, if you have, if you even hand out ice at practice, you're supposed to fill out an incident report. So please take care of those and make sure that those are getting in. That way, um, USA Swimming and um, the proper channels are informed of anything that's going on. Um, safe sport. Uh, I did not have a chance to talk to TJ and I know he is not on. Um, but as you guys are well aware, um, we're going to hit on this in a little bit. There are going to be a handful of openings on the board of directors. Safe sport is a, is a chair that we, we need somebody to really step up and, and take the reins on and, and move forward with it. Um, so We'll go on from there. DE and I, one of our most active committees. Ben, are you on? We're here. And it All looks right. like we're 
washed out by the light. But I would just like to thank everyone for hopping on this afternoon and to thank my committee and our counterparts in Colorado Springs for their ongoing work and just a job well done. I, I think the best opportunity is to highlight our ongoing workshops and continuing education opportunities for members in the LSC and to also just thank everyone for their flexibility going into champ season with the um, parallel time standards and taking care of those. So if you are also on the hunt for resources that could be helpful for you or your club that fall within a DEI or community engagement scope, feel free to send us an email, dei at ilswim.org. Thank you all very much. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, thank you for your time. Any questions for Ben? All right. Tom, open water. Hello, everybody. So as you just heard uh, open or read in chat, Open Water State is going to be uh, Tuesday, August 8th, and it's going to be at Lake Mantino, same location as last year. Um, some of the changes that we're going to do, we're going to make sure we award our top three uh, placing teams. We're going to have our open race was a 3K last year. We're going to align that more with the central zones and make it a 5K. And the entry fee is moving from 30 to 40 per individual to cover the costs. Um, keeping central zone open water uh, dates, our clinic is Thursday, June 15th. Racing is Friday, June 16th. Now, I'm same place at the uh, Pleasant Prairie Rexplex at uh, Lake Andrea. Uh, we've got USA Open Water Nationals, Junior Nationals coming this weekend um, in Sarasota, Florida. So please, uh, you know, give your cheers over to uh, our Illinois participants. And um, what's we're trying to do right now, we're finding out that the multi-state meet um, is kind of going away a little bit up in Wisconsin that last Thursday in June. Um, I'm going to jump the shark and I'm going to try to create uh, the Midwest Challenge open water event. Um, so that's still in the works. Um, the date planned is uh, Thursday, June 29th, if you guys want to pencil that down. And uh, over at uh, Lake Andrea, Pleasant Prairie, Rex Plex. So stay tuned for more information for that to come. And that's it. Awesome. Lots of open water opportunities coming, and that's a good thing. More opportunities for kids to experience that stuff. Thank you, Tom. Um, any questions for Tom with open water? Okay. Uh, Jeremy, governance. Yep. Um, let me make you a, let me make you a co-host so you can share your screen. All right. There you go. All right. Um, so we've been uh, you know part of part of the governance committee's task is. Um, board recruitment and uh, putting together a slate for elections. Um, we have several positions open for um, elections in the in the fall, uh, six of which are board positions. A couple of governance committee members who were voted on last year to one year terms are now being uh, th those those spots are coming up for election for a two year term. Um, as well. Those are non-board positions, but they're elected. Um, there's a QR code on this screen. I encourage you all to scan it. It's got uh, job descriptions or, or duty descriptions for each of these positions. These are not the long form official descriptions from the, um, the rules and regs or the bylaws. These are from the, uh, from the mouths of the people who are actually serving in these roles. So you get a better idea as to what they are actually doing. Um, so you can scan that for, for info if you are interested or if you know of anybody who might be interested. Um, general timeline for the fall elections is um, we're gonna take nominations for all of these elected positions between now and the Tuesday after regionals. Um, 
you can scan this QR code on the screen to nominate uh, yourself or someone else uh, for the positions that we are um, voting for. We'll be presenting the slate on September 5th to the uh, to Illinois Swimming. Uh, probably just to be an email, um, and then elections will be held at the House of Delegates, which I believe is October 1st. I saw on the calendar. Um, so That's correct. That is our timeline. If you have any questions, you can email us at uh, the governance email address uh, down there in the lower right hand corner, or you can ask them now. Thank you, Jeremy, and thank you, Governance. Um, it's nice to have that group working on these things. And if you feel like you'd be a good member um, for the Board of Directors or Governance Committee, please feel free to reach out to any of the members of the Governance Committee or anybody on the board. Um, we are more than happy to talk about you know, the time and the effort that it takes to do all of these different things. And without you guys volunteering, um, the board can't function in the swimmers lose out on a lot of opportunities to do things. So thank you guys. Thanks, Jeff. Can I just say one more thing? Uh, you know, there, yep, there, are some, there are some people, I mean, there are a, a lot of the, um, you know, familiar faces are, are on the Zoom right now, but I know that there are a few, a few peripherally involved people as well. Um, you don't need a wealth of experience necessarily to get involved or at least to get your foot in the door. You know, we are looking for, for people to join committees um, and, you know, that's, that's a good way to, um, you know, to, to get an idea of, of how things run um, and, and, you know, get, get yourself on, on, um, on the board at some point or, or in some role that can help out the LSC. We're always looking for people. We've been, you know, um, appointing people to, to positions uh, this, this past summer uh, as people roll out. Um, so, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to feel like, um, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't know if I would be good at this or I don't know if I know enough to be involved or, you know, I'm, I'm just an assistant coach. I don't know if, you know, I mean, both, you know, if you have any interest at all in, in uh, being a part of, of something bigger than just, you know, what, what's happening at your own pool and, and kind of setting the tone for, um, for what everybody gets out of this, um, we could use you. So, that's all I got. You said. <laughs> all right. Um, any questions for Jeremy with governance? All right. Um, last but not least, um, Brian with the Championship Meet Task Force. Before Brian starts talking, real quick, um, Championship Meet Task Force was put together initially to um, review take a look at what opportunities might exist for us to adjust. Can you hear me? Or, yeah, I, yeah, we can, Brian, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah. Can't hear you. It's Jess. I'm gonna have Jess do this. I'm have all kinds of issues. Give me just one second then. All right, hang on, just. All right, Jessica, you are now a co-host. If you wanted to continue whatever you were saying while I open up the slides, that's fine. No, no, no. Um, so basically the Championship Meet, for, Meet Task Force was put together to evaluate uh, opportunities for um, whatever it may be for changes to our current championship meet program. Um, as you know, going, going back through the years, we have kind of seen a lot of different iterations of the same meets. And, um, you know, we can, we can certainly say that the pandemic had a, a, an effect on things. Um, so I felt that it was time for us to evaluate what opportunities may or may not exist for us as an LSC. So with that, Jess, go ahead. Yeah, I should see awesome. you go. Okay. So um just so you can see the members, uh the we've been getting together um 
monthly, if not a few times a month, depending on when it was since early fall. Um, it's myself, Brian Brown, John Cable, Michael, Jeremy, uh, Jane, and Amy Adams has been helping um, as program director and providing us some of the data that we are have been asking for. So we are at a point now, kind of like Jeff said, that we have um, some ideas. So we want to share kind of where we're thinking, what we're looking at, and what we've already done, um, our goals behind some of the the ideas that we have come out of. So that's what you're going to see here. This is not a final of anything. It's just an update of kind of what we've been talking about. Uh, the background kind of what was just shared um, is that Jeff asked us in the fall to investigate these improvements. Um, after several meetings, we decided not to recommend any changes for spring of 2024. Um, in, in an effort to make sure that we are thorough and that it would um, match with the quad plan. Um, and so now we are focusing on implementation for spring of 2025. Our approach was that we wanted to make sure that we were making strategic decisions to serve our athletes, um, to focus on the purpose behind what we were doing, why we were doing it before we were getting worried about that meat management. And I'll say that um, Jane has been the best on the committee of reminding us when those of us that have those math minds are trying to figure out how we're going to envision these things and make them run to keep us focused on our goal and our purpose behind why we are talking about this. Um, we wanted to make sure that we're looking at all avenues and options that would offer the best possible experiences for all swimmers across all age groups and try and promote that athlete retention. Similar to the athlete report that we heard a few minutes ago with the focus on that 10 and under aspect, we are looking at that as well, is to grow our 10 and unders and to then retain them throughout 11, 12, 13, 14, and senior. In order to make the decisions and things to look at, we are looking at data. So we are taking a lot of um, things, <laughs> Amy's been running a lot of reports for us, but um, we know that in COVID years, things were different. So we may, we've pulled data from this year, but also have been looking at previous data and actually previous things that have been mentioned way back from 2012, when we were having conversations about changing our championship meets and looking at things a little bit differently. So here are our goals and considerations. So what we outlined is our major goal, what the focus was, and then some of the things that we are considering and that we are talking about and pulling data on in order to reach that goal and to order to help us reach that goal. Um, so our first goal is that we want to increase athlete retention. In order to do that, um, we are looking at evaluating time standards to build our pyramid from the base up, from that 10 and under age group um, up to the top of that seniors. The second consideration to reach this goal is to increase the fund and recognition. Um, and this would increase fund and recognition across um, all of our championship meets um, in different ways and different things. And then also the consideration is to add some mid-season meets. What that looks like or sounds like right now, we don't know, um, but just something to maybe add some more of that fund and recognition at different points during the season. Goal two was to provide more opportunities for swimmers at the championship level. Um, so trying to make sure that we were catching as many as we could and including as many as we could that have been at that championship level to, contain, to continue to perform at that level. Um, consideration one was looking at single age group cuts, which is a, a, a big undertaking, which is involving a lot of data on our side. <laughs> um, and consideration two um, is that the winner of regionals would auto advance to state. Similar to the high school sectionals um, and state format, this would provide a second opportunity um, and add some more of that fun and recognition to that regional meet for those swimmers that win an event but are missing the cut. At the max, if with seven regionals in the spring, it would add one heat if, if a full heat. Um, if all regional winners in a certain event did not achieve the cut. 
Consideration three is, again, to add those mid-season meets. We put it in both athlete retention and to provide more opportunities um, for swimmers at the championship level. And, um, oh, that's a good question. But we let me finish this one first. So to add the mid-season meets was under both of these goals is to try and catch, right? Sometimes we have kids that age up at different points in the season. And so talking about maybe a December type level meet um, that would provide opportunities for our championship level swimmers. So um, the question was asked, and I don't know if John or anyone else wanted to jump in, um, but Joe asked, would the regional advancement apply to age group and seniors? And at this point, we were talking about it, but we did not get yeah. into the specific data about if it was going to apply to, to both meets. At least. So we will add, we can add that to ours. Okay, goal three was to build the base of 10 under participation and championship meets. Um, the first consideration is to create a positive experience to those swimmers as they are joining and learning about swimming. Um, and that leads right into consideration two is to run a separate meet for 10 and unders. So this is a topic that has come up multiple times. Pretty sure it's come up <laughs> as long as I can remember being coaching in Illinois, we've talked about pulling the 10 unders out. So we are actually looking at this in order to make this a positive experience for our swimmers. Um, and to make it fun and exciting and focused on them, and to also increase the number of swimmers and hopefully then the retention. And our fourth goal was that we wanted to maintain meet formats that promote participation. So um, to maintain those meet formats, so if there are meets that are currently working. So consideration one right now that we would maintain our spring senior champ format. Um, the task force committee has looked at a lot of things and at this point believe that that current format is reaching the goals that we have right now. Um, one thing I will add to the list is if those kids at regionals, I would believe if we were running at regionals, we would move those kids up for winning regionals to go to senior champs as well. So I'll add that to our discussion list. We have a meeting tomorrow to discuss questions and ideas that came out of today. Um, consideration two is right now we wanna maintain the long course meet formats. We realize and recognize that overall numbers are lower in the summer due to various reasons. Um, so that right now our long course meet championship formats are working and it wouldn't, that's not where our focus is. And then consideration three is just to continue to look at the data to determine over time if changes can be made in the future. So it's not going to be a one and done and we're just going to throw it out there and let it ride. Um, we want to make sure that we are continuing to evaluate the data to look at what the meets look like, um, what ends up coming out of it, if changes need to be made um, moving forward. Um, so Wally asked a really good question about what about those swimmers that ate, advance from regionals but age up before state um, and having a few of those kids. So uh, there's never been a fantastic answer for those swimmers. Um, I had one this season too, so I know the pain those kids go through. But um, one of the things that we were hoping that would catch more of those swimmers is those single age group cuts. So if we had specific cuts for 12 year olds and then cuts for 11 year olds, um, so that 10 and under that aged up from re between regionals and age group state possibly would, you know, depending on their performance at regionals, be able to achieve um, some of those cuts at the lower end of the age group. So the consideration there in looking at single age group cuts for a uh, LSC of our size, is to try and provide more of those opportunities for those kids to continue on that championship level track. And that would be one of them. That's a great question. And yes, Joe, the fact that we were talking about those mid-season meets in December would also provide them with an opportunity to race um, and swim before an age up if it was a December. And that's it. 
So if there are other questions, feel free to ask them if I don't know the answer or if John or anyone else want, from the committee wanted to jump in. Uh, Michael Lawrence, I think it's- um, Jessica, I'm not a good typist, so I'm oh, gonna that's fine. <laughs> ask you a question here. Um, I look at this and I see mid-season meets, mid-season meets, 10 and under meets. So I don't know the plural, how many mid-season meets, but that looks like a total of six. Um, there's two seasons, two ten and under meets, you know, all of this potential for maybe six new meets that Illinois Swimming is offering. And we're, we led the meeting that we didn't have a bid for one of our championship meets. And that's kind of been an ongoing problem. And I don't know if the, I know you're just at the beginning of what you're doing. It seems that to create new meets when we're already having difficulty with JOs and, and yep. what we have might not be um, a good idea right out of the right out of the barn. Well, and uh, John will follow up with this, but let me address the first thing. So, mid-season meets is under two of those as considerations because we felt that what we're looking at fit both two different goals. But under goal four, maintaining the champs and long course meet. So right now we're really only looking at the short course format. So a mid-season meet might be a singular, potentially a singular meet in December, and then a 10 under separate 10 under meet in the spring. Um, what you did mention regarding um, getting hosts and uh, things like that. Jane also brought that up in regards to officials, right? The need for trying to build our base of officials and trying to, uh, to work with the officials committee once we came out with some of those things. Um, so that's a little different. Um, yeah. So John, did you want to jump in or did I cover uh, you, 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 you covered that well, it, you know, just reiterating, we're looking at the spring meet for 10 and under, nothing in the summer. We're looking at a December meet to grab some of those kids who might do some of those winter or spring sports that provide them an opportunity to compete at a state meet and also reach those kids who get uh, miss an opportunity due to a gap gap in, in their age group when our state meets. But Jessica said it awesome. You know, and I, can I, if I can jump in a little bit, um, I yep. believe that, um, the opportunity to host this, these say a 10 and under meet or a mid season meet would not necessarily require what I would call a mega facility. Um, when I say mega facility, I'm meaning a FMC or somewhere that requires that. I believe that the intent would be that we could run it out of one of our high schools. And if that's the case, that makes it much more feasible. We continue to have ample bids. Um, and when you see the list of bids that we got for regionals for spring 2024, the list is very, very long. So we have teams willing to host those events. Um, so just to kind of piggyback off of that. And I have not been involved in this group at all. So I'm seeing this information for the first time as you all are. No, you are, you're correct, Jeff, in the fact that we're looking at manageable meets that can be done at multiple different facilities instead of targeting uh, and putting a huge uh, price dollar on the host to host their facility. Um, so we're looking at these being opportunities for clubs to host multiple meets within their own facilities at a cheaper cost. Um, one of the questions that came through, Mark asked, um, would awards be by single age two to increase recognition that we haven't even gotten to that point yet of conversation. So that will be added to um, our list in regards to things to consider and talk about. Um, also, Joe asked, when is the thought to hold the 10 and under meets? Um, possibly senior champ weekend, but that was just tossed out there um, because like John just said, it, or the idea is behind it being a smaller meet, right? Is that it could be held at um, any of the high school things and it would be similar to a regional 
size meet as far as athletes. But again, you guys are doing a great job asking all the questions that um, us mathematical and meat focused people are looking at. Um, ideally, our, our ideas here are coming out of how to reach the goals of athlete retention um, and what the meets might look like might be um, thought out the first year and might need to be adjusted between years one, two, or three, four, and things like that. So um, this is kind of where we have ended. We have our meeting tomorrow, which these questions that you all brought up that were great. We will add to our discussion list and um, continue to move forward with digging into the data and actually seeing what this would look like and what those things would produce. So thank you. If I can ask one question of that group, um, and I was gonna send this to you guys anyways, with our planned um, quad planning meeting coming up here in the middle of May, um, May 13th, um, a lot of the stuff that we will have to base things upon are um, potential changes to this championship meet structure, if there's a financial need that we're going to need to move forward with. So if I can ask for your best ideas or what you guys feel is your best ideas in terms of adjustments that may need to take place, even if they don't take place, can you please send them to myself and um, and Jack? So that way, when we get into this um, planning, we have the opportunity to take that into account because that you know, everybody that's on this call knows that in my time as general chair, we have been extremely athlete focused and athlete centric, and we will continue to do that. Um, and so this seems to be the, the next piece of the puzzle that we need to take into consideration with camps and some of the other programs and stuff like that. So thank you guys. I think that that that's a Jeff, awesome starting point. Yes, kind of. <laughs> I'm probably going to get cut up. I'm probably going to get cut off, but... We know this has been talked about for a long time. We ask people to keep an open mind. We do know that we want to, we're meeting weeds so we can get as much to you guys as we can. Beyond that, the timeline is to have this all done. Let's say the board by August and give it to the committee that are ultimately charged with setting up our meat structures, the age group. I think we lost him. I think his, his point was that you know, from a timeline standpoint, yes, to get the board some information, some preliminary information, but then ultimately to make recommendations that the senior age group and performance committees could take back and um, evaluate and decide if they want to enact them. Um, any other questions in regards to the championship meet task force? Awesome. Any other general questions as they pertain to the operations and business of Illinois swimming? Cool. Um, House of Delegates. It will be a regular House of Delegates meeting on Sunday, October 1st, 2023. Um, the only business item in regards to that weekend that I want to make sure that everybody saw that weekend is the Hall of Fame. It is the House of Delegates and it is the banquet. Um, that weekend has been blocked from hosting any competitions that weekend. So no sanctioned events will take place that weekend with all of those things going on within the LSC. We hope you all understand as there's a lot of stuff going on that, that those couple of days. I know that um, Brian and I were talking recently about how we're essentially going to be at a hotel for three days in a row, 15 minutes from our houses. So um <laughs> and Pam and Amy as well, and amongst others. So thank you guys for understanding that. And we look forward to seeing you all in person on Sunday, October 1st. Put it in your calendars now, because we would like to see more people in attendance there. We are going to start blasting that out as soon as possible. And if you're interested in running for a position or getting involved in a committee, please do. We can definitely use the help. And it's always great to do all that stuff. Yeah, Friday 929 is also blocked because that is part of that whole weekend. All right. If there's nothing else, we will see you all poolside. Thank you all for joining this afternoon and have a wonderful rest of your Sunday.